Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives official. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thomas was eager to go home so he could play an online game with a friend as he, Julie, and Charlotte walked through Horton Town Square. Thomas became curious when Julie told him his dad had a special surprise for him, forcing him to postpone their play date. When Thomas asked Julie about the surprise, Julie played coy. At that moment, Leo approached the children and confided in them about how much their father had boasted about them during Leo's employment. Thomas had a loose tooth and wanted to make an advancement on his $50 settlement, so he wondered if Leo was still employed as the tooth fairy. Leo altered the topic to congratulate Thomas on the good news regarding his mother after he acknowledged that he wasn't the tooth fairy. Thomas questioned what was so wonderful about his mother's passing as Julie expressed shock. Leo suddenly changed his mind and said he had learned Thomas and Charlotte's mother had received angel wings and been elevated to the position of chief guardian angel. Then Leo declared that, yes, he was a fairy, and he handed Thomas and Charlotte money to replace their lost teeth. When Julie could take no more, she hustled the children out. Leo screamed after them, remember to floss, and Julie gave him a frustrated glance. When the kids got home, Chad told Abigail at the Horton residence that he wanted to tell Charlotte and Thomas the truth. Abigail complained that she and Chad had decided to wait, and she cried out that they could not inform the kids that she was back. Chad was unwilling to take the possibility that Rachel or another person would inform Thomas and Charlotte. The children have been without their mother long enough, he insisted. Abigail contended that because she had begun to regain her memories, they need to give it more time. Admire B&B, Days, General Hospital, or other soap operas. Participate in the discussion on our SC boards. To interact with fans and start a conversation right now, click this link. Chad refused to give up, insisting that the children were intelligent and would comprehend more than Abigail thought. When he asked Abigail whether she wanted her life back, she said that she did, more than Chad realized. Additionally, Chad reminded Abigail that after seeing tangible images of the wedding, her memory of the nuptials had returned. Seeing the youngsters in person, he reasoned, might bring back even more memories. Abigail looked terrified as Chad said it was time to come clean. Abigail begged Chad one last time, claiming that if she let the kids down, she wouldn't be able to live with herself. After a while, Chad gave in and took out his phone to warn Julie not to bring Thomas and Charlotte home. When he received a text from Julie saying that she and the kids were on their way, he became concerned. At that moment, Julie, Thomas, and Charlotte came in via the open door. With no further words, Chad and Abigail stared at Thomas and he questioned, Who are you? Julie prompted Chad to speak after observing that he had not answered Thomas, who had also asked why the unidentified woman was staring at him. Abigail raised her voice and pretended to be Chad's co-worker. She didn't anticipate running into Thomas. Supporting his assertion, Chad requested a reticent Julie to bring the children into the kitchen while he concluded his meeting at work. Thomas mentioned the surprise he was meant to receive, and Chad promised his son they would discuss it later. After Abigail and Chad had some time to themselves, they talked about how things had gone and Abigail affirmed that seeing the children had not brought up any memories. She wanted to discuss a plan she had for recovering more of her memories with Chad. Abigail then inquired as to Chad's thoughts on her proposal. Julie came back into the room before he could reply, berating Chad for lying to the children once more. Julie calmed down and enthusiastically presented herself to Abigail when Chad told her that he and Abigail had agreed to wait. When Julie raised her arms to give Abigail a hug, she seemed surprised to see her reply only a shy and courteous hello. Julie questioned what would happen if Abigail's plan to restore her memory didn't work out when she said she had given it to Chad. Abigail gave Julie the reassurance that Chad and she would still inform the kids later. Abigail wanted to travel to Paris and experience the couple's time there again, Chad disclosed. Julie observed with skepticism as Abigail inquired as to whether Chad had accepted the offer. After what had happened with Connie, Roman told Ava at the Brady pub that he had changed the locks. Ava reassured him that it was not his responsibility, even if he apologized for what the woman had done to her. She responded by apologizing for not paying her rent on time and for turning down the job that Roman had offered her. 
When Ava implied that she had already lost the better job she had taken, Roman was taken aback. Ava took a seat next to Roman and gave him an update on her, Stefan, and Gabby. Once Roman heard about Ava's problems, he advised her to wait and see how things stood with Stefan before deciding to return to work at the pub. Leo was about to walk into the tavern when Ava thanked Roman profusely for his understanding and walked out. He told Roman that the craziness of soap opera life didn't compare to real life and voiced his complaints. Leo admitted his mistake with Chad's children to Roman as he sipped on a beer at the bar. Roman advised Leo not to be too hard on himself because he had managed to hide his error. Leo acknowledged that he felt horrible about not telling Hattie that she was leaving the show. He clarified that he had been worried about Hattie's response and Roman admitted that she wouldn't have received the news well. Leo thought of Hattie as a friend and he lamented the fact that lying was never a good idea even when the motive seemed sound. Paulina became agitated when she discovered EJ at her door at Abe and Paulina's residence. He said he had made a house call for personal matters, extending an invitation to enter, and it concerned his brother. Stefan's signed declaration was given to Paulina by EJ, who also declared that his brother would no longer be an issue. Paulina glanced through the documents, where Stefan had taken back his claim that EJ was involved in the baby switch. EJ grinned and said that Paulina was done having an excuse to fire him. Paulina shot back, saying EJ had given her plenty of warning, but she admitted she didn't have a stand-in on the waiting list. Paulina was curious as to how EJ had persuaded Stefan to retract the assertion. Paulina teased EJ about what he would do if he and Stefan ran out of blackmail material, and EJ made suggestions that he had something on Stefan. With a smirk, EJ left after assuring her that both brothers had an endless supply of blackmail. Gabby, Sherry Jimenez, and Stefan, Brandon Barish, bid each other farewell. Gabby, Sherry Jimenez, and Stefan, Brandon Barish, bid each other farewell. Stefan declared in Gabby's hospital room that he had filed for divorce. After seeing Gabby's response, he inquired as to why, given her vow to steal everything from him, she appeared shocked. Gabby remembered that Stefan had previously promised her that he would fight to the latter end to keep their marriage intact, and she had pushed him to explain why he was eager to get a divorce. Stefan retorted that he wanted the cycle to break since he and Gabby had been making each other miserable. Gabby and Stefan also acknowledged that they were unable to shake the mental pictures of each other's treachery. Stefan thought there was nothing left for them to fight for, and Gabby seemed offended by the idea. She admitted that her only regret, upon realizing she was going to die, was not telling Stefan one last time how much she loved him. She had thought that staring death in the face would bring them a fresh start, but her rage had taken over when she learned of his attempt to have another sexual relationship with Ava. Stefan reaffirmed that nothing had occurred between him and Ava at that particular time, and Gabby added that there had also been no second-hand events between her and EJ. Stefan claimed to be aware that following their initial meeting, Gabby made an attempt to woo EJ but EJ turned her down. Gabby acknowledged that she had felt the same desire to harm Stefan as he did. She thought that a couple who truly loved one another wouldn't be so eager to cause each other suffering. Gabby also talked about how devastated she had been to think Stefan was dead. When Stefan had come back, Gabby had felt whole again, and he recalled how he had wanted nothing to do with her at the moment. After their brief period of happiness, events tore them apart once more, and Gabby was imprisoned. Gabby discovered that Stefan had deceived her, but she had survived the ordeal thanks to him. The infidelity was described by Stefan as the worst mistake of my life, while Gabby admitted that she had screwed it up even more. Reciting the poetry he'd written her for their anniversary, Stefan replied that he'd never loved anybody as much as Gabby. He started to cry as he said this. Both of them agreed that they were done fighting and that Gabby would file for divorce as well. With tears in their eyes, they bid each other farewell and apologized. Gabby started crying as Stefan left.